you're listening to the Online DJ Podcast, where today we're talking to Derek Pengeli all about using a microphone. Ladies and gents, welcome to another episode of the Online DJ Podcast. Now today we're going to be talking all about using the microphone. Now using a microphone is one of those things that new DJs starting out can be really shy about using. Because they feel their voice isn't good enough, they feel they lack enthusiasm, they feel they lack confidence, they don't know how they should be holding a mic, they don't know what they should be saying, all sorts of things like this. So today we've got a very special guest with us, Mr. Derek Pengeli. Now, Mr. Derek Pengeli is a professional speaker. He runs seminars for DJs on wedding introductions and all other subjects. And he's been a DJ for many, many years. So he has a lot of experience in this field. And we've got him with us today to ask him some questions about using a microphone. So firstly, Derek, could you tell us a little bit about you, a little bit about your background and maybe what you're doing now. Hi, my name is Derek Pengeli. I'm a mobile DJ and I have been for longer than I care to remember. I started out in youth clubs back in 1969 and I've been spinning on and off ever since. I celebrate my 62nd birthday this August. Over the years I've covered just about every type of event you can imagine from private and corporate events. Up until 2004 I had a variety of day jobs to help subsidize my income. I spent 23 years managing high street electrical stores, including people like Currys, Rumbelows, and Tandy. I then switched to the motor trade and worked for a Ford main dealer before ending up working for Vauxhall Motors, initially in manufacturing at the Ellesmere Port plant, before being seconded to the commercial vehicle business development team at Luton to help launch the reintroduction of medium-sized panel vans into the UK marketplace. I left Vauxhall in 2004 to concentrate full-time on my DJ business. David Summers & Co Entertainment Limited had been formed in 1998 and been run by my wife Carol. Business were booming and it was time to get serious about my passion for all things music related, especially wedding receptions. So let's backpedal a few years to 2002. In 2002, I set out to find resources of educational materials for DJs that I could use to help train new staff for our company. David Summers & Co Entertainment was booming. Alas, I couldn't find any educational materials in the UK, so I traveled to the United States of America, where I knew an organization called Mobile Beat Magazine organized a three-day convention featuring loads of seminars teaching all aspects of running a DJ business as well as things like marketing, sales, and performance skills. What I found over there changed my entire perception of the DJ business, and I started seeking out advice, training, and coaching from various people who had books, CDs, and training courses on offer. Little did I know then that I would return to that convention regularly to top up my knowledge learn new skills and perfect my marketing, sales and performance abilities. In 2004, I was instrumental in transforming the Thames Valley Disc Jockey Association into the National Association of DJs and soon after became its chairman. Over the following three years, NADJ grew and education featured prominently in our local group meetings. I became a regular writer for Pro Mobile magazine when it was launched and developed a great working relationship with the founder and editor, Eddie Short. A few years later, I found myself producing and directing seminars at the BPM show at Donington Park. Mark Walsh and Eddie invited me back, and I continue to appear at the show to this day, now that it's relocated at the Birmingham NEC. In 2011, I moved to the Mediterranean island of Cyprus, where I now live and work, mainly as a wedding DJ for British people who decide to fly out, and get married in the sun. After much browbeating and persuasion by Eddie and Mark, 
and my fellow NADJ committee members, I used my first year in Cyprus to write a book. It's called Wedding Marketing for DJs, and it's published by ProMobile and can be obtained from their online bookshop. I've also written an ebook for brides titled Wedding Day Secrets, Facts the Industry Would Prefer Brides Didn't Know. It's a guide designed to empower brides to get the best possible entertainment at their wedding and not to accept average or mediocre or tolerate venues who very often say, and I quote, well, we always do things this way. Currently, I coach a small but select group of wedding DJs privately in my DJ Mentor 365 group. And I also continue to produce workshops across the UK, covering marketing, staging, production, and more recently, performance skills, especially microphone usage and introduction techniques. Thanks for that, Derek. It seems like you've had a variety of experience in a lot of industries, so that's fantastic. But moving on to the areas of microphones, why do you personally feel that the microphone is such a vital tool in any DJ's arsenal? The microphone, when used correctly, will allow a DJ to effectively communicate with his audience. If he or she can build a relationship or a rapport with people in the room and demonstrate their ability to be open and responsive to requests, then he or she is better placed to connect with any musical demands. If a DJ can at the very least introduce himself and be heard clearly at the start of the evening, guests will be more responsive and attentive to when he later needs them to gather around a dance floor or give applause for a birthday dedication, a special request, or maybe a bride and groom's first dance. When I first started out, most DJs had to use a microphone. In those days, we were known as personality DJs. In fact, the only mixing back then was with your mouth. Unfortunately, the DJ ego got in the way of the music and the smashy and nicey image, which was so brilliantly portrayed by Peter Kay, became very cheesy and annoying to the public. What followed was understandable. DJs stopped talking and, with the help of new technology, put their heads down, donned their headphones and started mixing music on the fly. The dance floor became the focus and playing an entire track from start to finish became a rarity. Fortunately, a few personality DJs survived, but they seriously changed what they did and how they did it. Gone was the, that was, this is, between every record. The microphone was only used to make dedications, give shout outs, or to churn the dance floor when shifting between genres. Today, many DJs have extended their use of the microphone to become party hosts and to accept responsibility for making introductions and general announcements as well as helping to add excitement and enthusiasm when appropriate. Now, as I said at the start of the show, many DJs who are sort of starting out feel very shy and not very confident on the microphone. Now, what's your advice for sort of getting around this and getting more confident on the mic? Practice makes perfect. My first tip is to get used to hearing your own voice from in front of the speakers out on the dance floor. Remember to talk slowly and think about the words you're going to say. Record yourself and listen closely to the playback, to what you've said and how you said it. A good general rule is less is more. Think about what you wish to achieve by using the microphone and making that announcement or introduction in the first place. What is your objective? What is the reaction you expect? What do you want people to do? If you don't have a good reason for saying something, then don't bother. Practice in front of a mirror. Stand tall and breathe deeply three or four times before you speak. Put a smile on your face and relax. If you're using the microphone from behind your DJ console, then remember to drop any music volume to a suitable level. Never ever try to shout over the music level. Ideally, Use an auto-fade system if it's fitted to your mixer. Now, other than feeling and sounding confident, I feel personally that it's very important to try and inject some personality into my mic work. Do you agree with this, and how would you personally go about doing it? Always use your own voice. Don't try and put on a false radio voice or try to be too loud and shouty. 
Try to be conversational. Address your remarks to one individual and script your words wisely. Practice your vocal delivery and concentrate on your inflection. The way you pronounce a word can have a big effect on how it's received by the listener. Also consider varying the pace of each sentence so that you can convey energy and enthusiasm into what you say. Nobody likes a monotone and boring and staid delivery. People like to receive compliments, so be complimentary on the microphone. If your audience is responsive and full of energy, then thank them and tell them just how great they are. If a dancer is pulling off some really cool moves, then mention them, if and when it's appropriate. Now, Derek, when it comes to microphone technique, some people can sound like they're trying to eat the microphone, whereas other people can sound like they're holding it down by their shoe at times. Now, obviously that's being exaggerated there and that's over the top, but what's some guidance you can give in actual microphone technique? The first thing to do is buy the best quality microphone you can afford. Cheaper microphones are less sensitive and therefore need to be held closer to the mouth. A quality microphone will have sufficient sensitivity and gain to allow it to be held a couple of inches below the mouth and still deliver ample volume levels. Think of it this way. The microphone is the first piece of equipment in the audio chain, it plugs into the mixer, and the sound passes through an amplifier before finally emerging through the speakers. So if you spend less than £100 on your microphone and £1,000 on your speakers, no wonder your voice doesn't sound that great. You should expect to pay £100 to £200 for a quality cabled microphone and £200 to £600 or more for a quality wireless microphone system. Most microphones only require you to speak over the, the top of the pickup head and not necessarily into the head. Experiment changing the angle. If you currently tend to hold the microphone in front of your mouth with the body pointing away from you, then try rotating the body down through 90 degrees by turning your wrist so that it points to the floor. Position the pickup below your mouth, level with your chin, or a little lower. This will help prevent you overdriving the microphone and will also allow your face and lips to be seen by the audience. On no account cup the microphone like a rapper. It may look cool, but it does nothing for your appearance and invariably your voice will be distorted, too loud and a total turn off for your listeners. Now, weddings are a big part of the mobile DJ industry and it's an event where the mic has to be used very often, especially in aspects like first dance, cutting of the cake, introducing the bride and groom, speeches. So how would you approach this type of event differently to say you would a birthday party in terms of using the microphone? Weddings are sprinkled with what I call spotlight moments. We DJs have a responsibility to our clients to ensure those moments are seen, appreciated and enjoyed by everyone in the room. Introductions of spotlight moments need to be personal and emotional. Therefore, it's essential that first names are used whenever possible. Getting people's attention can be a challenge. There are methods and techniques which I teach in my workshops and enable the DJ, host, to get the attention of the room quickly. Understanding how focal points work and directing the focus of activity in relationship to what is happening is essential. Now, another argued aspect I see in forums, etc., is the use of the terms like bride and groom or Mr. and Mrs. Now, do you feel we should be using these or should we be using something else? And how should we be using them? On no account should DJs ever refer to the happy couple or the bride and groom or the father of the bride without using their real names. It's also a great idea to know more about the person you're introducing so that you can add more detail to what would otherwise be a very dry announcement. Finally, I would also encourage you using sound beds to add dynamics, emotion and energy to introductions of people or any spotlight moments that are about to happen. 
If you add additional changes in lighting at the same time, then you will have achieved a positive emotional reaction or a positive emotional experience for all to enjoy. In terms of any other advice or tips you might have about using a mic or speaking, have you got any more you can give us? Reading aloud will help perfect the way you speak on a microphone. Writing what you want to say by way of a script will also help. If you take a paragraph of text and break it down sentence by sentence, and then word by word, you'll begin to understand what the author intended when he wrote it. Words on a page are open to interpretation. This is often far too clear, by the way, posts are misinterpreted in forums and Facebook groups. Try saying the sentence, I love you, three different ways. By changing the emphasis and the inflection on each word in turn, one sentence with three subtle changes in meaning, all down to the way the words are pronounced and the pace at which the sentence is spoken, will have a completely different meaning. Try it. You'll be surprised. Try reading a page from a book and look for the adjectives and adverbs. Concentrate on how they change the perception of the sentence and look for the emotion within the text. Finally, get into character. Think about who would be saying the words and how are they feeling at the time. Are they happy? Are they sad? Excited or calm? Think about all of this when you next write an introduction so that your delivery is engaging, interesting, and achieves the desired objectives for saying it in the first place. So Derek, if people want to find out more information about you, maybe the work you're doing, stuff like that, your seminars, where can they find this information? The best place to find out more about me is by going to my WordPress blog website. That's all the W's, weddingmarketingfordjs.co.uk. There you'll find details on forthcoming seminars, workshops, and one-to-one -one pay-as-you-go coaching and mentoring. Please feel free to add me as a friend on Facebook by searching for Derek Pengeli. So Derek, before we let you go today, we ask all our guests that come on to the Online DJ podcast what their favourite song of all time is. Now we know this is a hard question for DJs and most people to actually answer, but let's throw the question over to you. What is your favourite song of all time? My favourite song of all time? Wow, that's almost impossible to choose, especially as I love all genres of music. But if I had to pick a track that I most like to feature when working, I would go back in time, back to my musical roots. George McRae's Rocky Baby would definitely be high on my list. However, if I was alone at home, lying by my pool in the sun, it would probably be a Moody Blues track. I was very much into progressive rock in my formative years. I love the album Question of Balance. So the title track Question would be my choice for personal listening. Both of which rather date me. But then again, I did start out doing this an awful long time ago. Derek, thanks for coming on the show today and answering all these questions for us. It's been great. Thanks for asking me. It's been a pleasure. All right, ladies and gents, so that was Derek Pengeli there giving us some advice on using a microphone and speaking. So I hope you guys found that useful, and I really want to encourage you to go and check out some of the workshops, seminars, books, etc. that Derek Pengeli does, because I really feel he offers some valuable information to help us as DJs improve what we do when it comes to the microphone, introductions, speaking, and a whole other variety of stuff in the DJ industry. And... When it comes back to using a microphone and speaking, I personally feel it's a vital tool that all DJs should be looking to be good at in our work. So other than that, if you want to discuss anything we've talked about on the show today, you know where to find us on Twitter, at Online DJ HQ, or on Facebook, Online DJ. Or you can head over to our blog, OnlineDJ.co. But other than that, see you on the next show. See ya.
Bye.